the economy of the United Kingdom. The eventual exit of Britain from the EU on January the 31st, 2020, after a series of negotiations and compromises, initiated a period of economic transition and uncertainty worldwide. This shows how important the economy of the United Kingdom has been to the world. Brexit, as the process is generally called, has drawn more attention to the UK economy than ever before. For you to make sense of all that, I'd love to give you a peep through the United Kingdom's economy in this video. The Background and Currency Let's take it from before World War I and World War II, since the country's economy was negatively affected by the war, even though the UK didn't lose. The industrialization of the economy was pioneered by Britain in the 18th century. During the 19th century, the country had been exerting great influence on the global economy, making as much as 9.1% of the world's GDP in 1870. This is attributable to its expansive colonial empire and superior technological strides. However, as the US and Germany were embarking on the second industrial revolution in their territories, a growing economic challenge was facing the UK. This was complicated by the cost of the two world wars in the 20th century. Therefore, the economic position of the UK didn't remain as dominant as it used to be. Yet, in spite of this relative decline in global dominance, the country retained its ability to exert significant power and influence in the 21st century world. The country's economy has been fiercely independent and highly developed. As an international trading centre, the UK has been a vital force in the 19th century industrial revolution, ever since the economy of the UK remained a developed social market and market-oriented. In terms of nominal gross domestic product, the UK economy is the fifth largest in the world and the ninth largest measured by purchasing power. The economy is in the 21st position in the world when measured by GDP per capita. This means that the UK economy constitutes 3.3 of the world's GDP. As one of the world's most globalised economies comprising England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, the UK economy has grown to be the fifth largest exporter and the fifth largest importer in the world as of 2019. The country's inward foreign direct investment is the third largest, while outward foreign direct investment is the fifth largest. Agriculture in the United Kingdom Some of the drivers of the economy in most countries are agriculture, forestry and fishing. Let's take a look at the economy of the UK through these, starting first with 2% of its employed population are engaged in farming. Yet, still, with the aid of high-level mechanisation and commercial intensification of yields, the country has been able to produce food in excess of what the population needs. This is also supported by various other policies. Arable land is also declining, though, having been lost to pastoral farming. Barley, beets, oats, sugar, potatoes, wheat and rapeseed are among the most important farm crops in the country. These are not produced only for human consumption. Significant proportions of these crops, especially barley, rapeseed and wheat, provide animal feed, while the remainder is for human consumption. Cattle, calves, sheep, lambs, pigs and poultry are the major livestock products yielded by the UK agriculture. With the exception of sugar and cheese, the UK has a remarkably high level of food self-sufficiency. The role of forestry Forestry cannot be neglected in the economy of the UK. Almost a tenth of the country's land is reserved for economic forestry. There is the Forestry Commission, which manages about half of the UK's woodlands with government support. Other forestry resources are managed by the private sector. Nevertheless, domestic timber production can supply only about one-fifth of the UK's timber needs. You'll find the recent planting concentrated in upland areas, yet the Forestry Commission is encouraging the planting of broad-leaved trees whenever they're found to be appropriate. Fishing in the UK economy Merely going by statistics, you may commend the UK as one of the leading fishing countries in Europe. However, the fishing industry is not doing so well. It's been experiencing a long-term decline in recent times. It could supply only half the country's fishing demand. Major fish being produced are cod, haddock, mackerel, plaice and whittling. There are also shellfish, such as crabs, lobsters, oysters, nephrops, that is, Norway lobsters. Nevertheless, estuarine fish farming, especially trout and salmon, has continued to expand significantly. Some five decades ago, fishing limits were extended, such that fishes could reach as far as 200 nautical miles offshore. It should also be noted that a large portion of the area where EU member nations fished lied within British waters. 
This necessitated the regulation of fishing communities on the coast all the time the United Kingdom remained a part of the EU. However, now that the country is no longer part of the EU, the UK lost opportunities to fish in other, more distant waters, such as those off Iceland. With this, the total catch of the UK has been reduced to less than half of other countries of the EU. Mineral resources and energy supporting the UK economy The UK's economy doesn't depend so much on economically valuable minerals resources as the country is endowed with only relatively limited supplies. The extraction of iron ore in the country that was hitherto important is no longer available in economic quantity. While tin and zinc are also mined, the former can supply about half of local demand. Of course, in the country, there are abundant deposits of non-metallic minerals, such as sand, gravel, clay and clay shale, chalk, dolomite, limestone, slate, barite, talc, kaolin, ball clay, celestine and gypsum. On the other hand, though, there are relatively large energy resources in the UK, including oil and natural gas, and coal. However, coal, which was once used to fuel the British economy, is no longer as valuable as it used to be. You need to go back to history, to the 1913s, when more than 300 million tonnes of coal were produced by some 1 million workers. To put that in perspective, the current reduction in both manpower and productions. When oil was discovered in the North Sea, and areas were apportioned to the surrounding countries, oil exploitation and exploration developed rapidly. This enabled the UK to become virtually a producer of oil, enough for domestic use and even some more for export. At the dawn of the 21st century, the country was producing about 3 million barrels of oil per day, becoming one of the largest producers of oil in the world. The UK economy and its balance of payment benefited immensely from oil revenues. The country even has enough to invest abroad in order to offset diminishing oil income that is sure to happen sometime in the future, though. The UK's energy sector has been transformed by the combo of oil and natural gas self-sufficiency and coal mining decline. Electricity supply has received a slight boost from nuclear fuel. Hydroelectric power is also contributing a little, especially in Scotland. However, most of the country's electricity is generated via conventional steam power stations. The United Kingdom's Manufacturing Sector Viewed as a whole, the manufacturing sector in the UK hasn't lived up to its hype. Its contribution to the country's GDP and employment has contributed to shrink, with about one-fifth at the dawn of the 21st century. The trend has continued for four decades, but the sector has bounced back a bit recently. Prominent in the British manufacturing industry are engineering, food and beverages, tobacco, textiles, chemicals, printing and manufacturing, publishing and minerals and metals, and textiles, leather, with chemicals and electrical engineering being the fastest growing sectors. Pharmaceuticals and specialty products appear to have more positive influence on the UK's economy, while instrument engineering and transport engineering are movers and shakers in the engineering sector. The country's economy is not so much benefiting from textiles, clothing and footwear industries as these have been in steady decline. This is due to the difficulty that local manufacturers are facing as they compete with imports, especially from Asian countries. Finance in the UK economy the United Kingdom's finance sector has always been influential in the world economy. Deregulation and restructuring of the 1980s and 90s have introduced changes in banking, insurance, the London Stock Exchange and commodity markets. For instance, housing loans, which were the responsibilities of building societies, are now welcoming banks and insurance companies. As the 20th century was winding down, the UK's finance sector of the economy employed more than one million people. During the same period, it contributed about one-twelfth of the GDP. While medium-sized cities such as Leeds and Edinburgh have also served as a centre for these services, London's dominance in the industry remains unabated as a hub of international financial operations. The Financial Services Authority FSA, established in 1997 to regulate financial services replaced many separate supervisory organisations and their different self-regulations. It was replaced in 2013 by three new bodies, namely the Financial Conduct Authority FCA, the Financial Policy Committee FPC, and the Prudential Regulation Authority PRA. The FPC and PRA were embedded in the Bank of England, having the power to write to issue banknotes in England and Wales and to supervise and regulate banks. The UK's economy is diverse and provides a wide and interesting field of research. 
Thanks for watching this video guys, and don't forget to subscribe, comment, and turn on the notification bell.